We are very pleased to welcome Brennan Sani, the reigning WHL Coach of the Year. And with it being the new year, I'm sure he hasn't thought about that for a while because it's a new year and they're rolling. Brennan, welcome back to the RP Show. I would say congratulations on this season so far. We haven't talked all season, man. What's been going right for your Eastern Conference leaders this season? It's year three for this staff now. And so a lot of players have known us for a long time. We're very, very tight in our dressing room from leaders to staff to players we've acquired. So I think it's just a culmination of a process that started a few years ago is what you're seeing right now. 25, 8, 2, and 1 leads the division, 53 points, 5 up on Medicine Hat. You, you know all this, 9 up on the Moose Jaw Warriors. I'm hearing all these trade rumors, but I'm not hearing the blades, Brennan. And you've made moves already. But what, what do you expect ahead for you guys before the trade deadline? Can you say anything, or are you happy with what you have? Well, I just think that I need to stay in my lane a little bit. I mean, we chat with management all the time, <laughs> absolutely. But I'm not really, I'm not in charge of that. And I'm not, you know, making all the calls to other GMs and stuff like that. So uh, are we done? Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. What I do know is that I'm really excited to get our whole group together that we do have right now. Because for basically the entire season, we've not had our full team. We had, when we acquired Minton, he didn't even have a practice with us, and and then Mullendike went out of the lineup. So we haven't really had our full team yet this season. So that's really what I'm excited for. Uh, you know what? Fraser Minton joined us in the middle of your West Coast trip. I don't think he'd played a game for you guys when he did. Uh, how is he? And then he ends up taking off to the World Juniors. How's he been for you guys, or is it too soon to even say? I think his aura of maturity and leadership was just, so obvious right away. I think everyone saw it. When he stepped in, I think every player almost just took a step and said, holy smokes, this, so this is what a pro looks like. He, he is elite in every area. He's very, very impressive from the human to uh, the student to the hockey player. Very, very impressive. And I'm very much looking forward to working with him for the rest of the year. Funny what a handful of games up in the show will do, even if it's with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I joke. I know he's that player. I saw him play here in Sunrise, and to be honest, he fit right in. So you've, you've got an NHL player in your lineup. Would I be right in saying that, Brennan? I think so. I think so. I mean, it, it is nice for the NHL teams when, you know, guys are young and you don't want to put them right into the fire and through that long grind of a season and, and playoffs and all that. To give him that extra year of just growth physically, a little extra time, a lot of puck touches uh, in juniors. So uh, that's my opinion. I, he could play in the NHL right now, but I also think it's a benefit to him long term to, to have a year in junior. Hey, I think you'll enjoy the back and forth. John in Edmonton's watching Oil Kings season ticket holder, and he says no WHL team has had their full lineup yet this season. I'm sure you get a kick out of that. You're only really worried about your own roster, but is that, I guess everybody goes through injuries. What's your health level right now? I mean, last game we had six or seven players out of the lineup. I, we have had that for a little bit. And well, it's true, like teams are always missing players. What I'm referring to is uh, a world junior NHL player in Minton at the same time as a first round NHL draft pick and signed NHL player in Tanner Mollendike. And now uh, uh, Alexander Suzalev, who is also a signed NHL player. Like, I'm talking like players that are elite players in this league and, you know, will play in the NHL. I think when you get that group together, uh, I think a lot of other things become clear. And so we just haven't had that clarity where you're having elite high level players and what it looks like and how your lines run and how your power play looks like there, there is unknown. So while I understand what he's saying, players are missing every game. There, there are st still things we got to work through. Oh, yeah, and John in Edmonton just likes to be a fly in the ointment. But you got to love the passion. And, you know, the other thing, there's got to be some unfinished business 
Brandon, I would think in your mind, because was it just last year against the Warriors you guys were so beat up? Tristan Robbins was playing like on a broken foot or something, or was a broken hand, and you know what I mean? Like, uh, you didn't have your full lineup then. What's the, what's the attitude? And he's not even around, but it's still the, the core is there, and it's a great, maybe even a better team. Are, are, are the guys thinking playoff shit, or are you even allowing them to think playoff shit? I, yeah, two years ago in the first round, we lose to Moose Jaw missing, Aiden Delgore, John Deere, and Tristan Robbins could, in the last couple of games, maybe take some power play shifts. Last year in the third round, we're, we're up against Winnipeg a couple of days after playing a game seven in the second round, and we're, we're calling up APD, and, and we're just out of juice. I, I, we are thinking playoffs because I, I don't think that you just flip a switch. We're trying to develop right now the habits and the routines that we think are going to be successful come playoff time to have that longevity. It's really important to manage ice time. It's really important to manage this and that to try and stay as healthy as possible. We're trying to get into the gym as much as possible right now so we can back off a little bit come playoff time. And it's also, you know, video and teaching with a lot of new players right now. Man, are we doing a lot of meetings and we're trying to make sure everyone's on the exact same page. Uh, and so then we can back off those meetings a little bit as we get deeper. So our goal regular season wise is to win the division and hang that banner. And then from there, it's a new goal and it's a WHL championship for us. Would I be right in saying that you learned from those last two playoff runs and you, are you, you've changed things up a little bit? Yeah, you learn. Absolutely. No question. Uh, you learn what it takes in the big moments. Those are it's it, so when you go through your military training and you got your 90 day thing, like there's no bullets flying and you're preparing for when there's bullets flying, but nothing prepares you like when there's bullets flying. So I think getting bounced in the first round two years ago taught us a, a massive lesson. I think two game seven wins comebacks last year also taught us massive lessons. And with so many of the guys that were on those teams, I hope we can apply those lessons and and take the next step um for me personally like this is year nine in the league as a player assistant coach and head coach and man that's that's enough time like it's it's time to win a whl championship hey well lastly i'll say this i hope saskatoon realizes what they have but i think they do i they, i used to live there it's a tremendous hockey city and they haven't had a sustained good team like this for 30 years what are you hearing around town uh, and what's the groundswell of support there? Yeah, you know what? We talk about that too. We, uh, we are so fortunate to have Blaine White as our AT. And he was here in the 90s. He was with those teams uh, in the finals. And Whitey. Yeah, Whitey, man. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's such a good lesson to have so many people that have gone through the pain. So we understand as a team and as a staff what this means. We understand that how rare this is, and we are not taking a single day or game for granted. Like our last two crowds, we were at 8,000 and 7,000, and we don't want to just be an all-star team, acquire players, lose all your picks. We don't want to be that all-star team feel. We want to be a team, and that's our focus. Even though we've acquired players, we intend to be the tightest team in this league we think it's a strength it was a strength of ours last year and we intend to for it to be a strength we want to be a team that the fans enjoy watching because we're all heart and soul sounds like you've got it going so uh, coach i'll just say this good luck it's been a thrill to watch man uh congratulations on your success so far and please take it easy on my pats tomorrow night thanks brennan thanks rp <laughs> Brett and Sonny, head coach of the Saskatoon Blades.